Hello. I said hello. Hello. <laughs> Don't be rude. Uh, my name's Clayton Davidson, Senior Awards Editor at Variety. Very happy to be here today. Uh, there's some great shows on the ET, don't you think so? It's a good, good time to for the ET. So uh, I brought some friends, so we're going to talk to them a little bit and have a good time. Sound good? Yes! All right. Next up, he's already in the Variety family because he was one of uh, 2019's comics to watch. The host of Celebrity Squares, DC Youngfly. Uh, next up, I call him uh, the Meryl Streep of the Grammy world. 20 Grammy wins to his name. Ladies and gentlemen, Kirk Franklin. Woo! Uh, next up, we have uh, one of the greatest OG directors in here, directed films such as Mr. and Mrs. Smith, also doing TV shows like The Cheetah Girls. Guys, we have uh, Scott. And then we have the youngest showrunner in television, which is weird. I'm the youngest awards uh, editor in, in here, too, so we have that in common. Ladies and gentlemen, Jordan E. Cooper. The most serious guy in this business, Star of Average Joe, Dion Cole. Woo! All right. All right. this meeting with you guys today. I'm glad you're here. Let's uh, talk shop, DC. <laughs> what it do? Why you sound like that? Oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> Let's talk, talk. DC. <laughs> Let me one of you here, man. Come on. Uh, listen, you've done a lot of stand-up and you've worked a lot of various uh, mediums uh, showing your comic skills. How did you, is there anything additional you had to learn or prepare to host something like Celebrity Square? I mean, well, Celebrity Square is uh, pre-recorded, so anything pre-recorded that you can like mess up on, you'll never know because, you know what I'm saying, you can already record again. But I was kind of already trained from when I had to do TRL because that was live, that's like broadcasting, that's like news. So if the teleprompter goes off, you're still live on television and that's what makes you. So one time we was on, we was on air and the teleprompter had to go off and it was off for like two minutes. The longest two minutes ever, and the people just in my ear just like, DC keep talking, and I'm like, what's on America? <laughs> so it's like when you've been, you know what I'm saying, molded from that background, when you go do pre recorded, it's more so just like, you know what, just bring in your personality and just, you know what I'm saying, and kind of fill in the spaces, and that's what all I, you know what I'm saying? Thank you. Mr. <laughs> Franklin, sir. Uh, you have been submitted for original music and lyrics for that song, That Way, as performed on Kingdom uh, Business, you also guest star this season. Uh, I think you might have a career in music in your future. Uh, I think you're doing some great things. Uh, what differs this time around for you, uh, taking on a song such as this? And, you know, we listened to your gospel stuff for such a long time, and now you're really touching all different types of mediums now. Well, you don't have to say a long time back on old. <laughs> <laughs> you could say it just once and leave it alone. Uh, no, man, I'm, 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 I'm just really thankful and grateful for BT. They've been a great family for me, and, and uh, they, they just allowed me to explore different lanes from from, um, from Sunday best to, to uh, work with Dr. Michael Jones and Celebration of Gospel, and now working along with the great LeVon Franklin, Holly Davis Carter, and uh, this great man right here working on human business. And so, uh, and um, you know, have, having the chance to write the story, um, write music in real time, and story is something I've always enjoyed. And so it's really great for the opportunity, and even great to have a song to be considered um, for, for, such, for such a prestigious moment like this. And so, you know, you know, just always thankful for the news. You know, everything new in my life, I'm very humble by it, and, and I just want to be a good steward of the news. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah. Uh, Mr. Scott, you're submitted for directing the episode, the episode Song of Joy, 
you've been around, I'm not gonna say a long time anymore, I'm, you just got here. Uh, no, 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 yeah. I'm old. Oh, yeah, right, right, right. Um, you, you touch film, you touch TV, and I mean, this is some of the most comfortable direction that I've seen from you in your long esteemed career. Can you just talk about your approach to helming this show and that differs from anything else that you've tackled before? Yeah, no, I, I, I come out of improvisational theater, I come out of Broadway, I come, I've come a long way. For Colored Girls, you know, we put that together, and then when we put that together, you get into the people. And what I loved about this was, of course, Kirk Franklin's music, oh my God, you know, and I think the first thing I said when I took the show is, Kirk, who's gonna be you? He said, what do you mean, who's gonna be me? And I said, the choir director, who's gonna be that choir director? Who's gonna be dancing all through the, you know? So, I've done a lot of shows, you know, Cheetah Girls, it's, it's, I've done music, I've done comedy, I've done it all. And I enjoy it, and I brought that. I brought all that to this, and we, we, and the Song of Joy was such a wonderful episode. And that first, the pilot, the first season, you know, just having your song, having your music, just it, it's a, it's a roadmap. It's a roadmap, and I go into everything with the roadmap. And yes, I may be old. I'm still here, and I'm still going to be here for a long time. You know, no, no. <laughs> but it comes from here. It comes from here. And what I say to actors, you've got to be in the moment. You've got to live in the moment. It may say something on the script, but if it don't come out your mouth right, it's wrong. Mm -hmm. So I, I think I teach a lot. Mm -hmm. We're right now. Thank you. All right, Jordan Cooper, let's go through this. So, coming off two Tony nominations uh, last year. Uh, you submitted for directing uh, Miss Pat uh, 402, The Book of Denise. Uh, Miss Pat Sykin, you kind of do everything at this point and putting me to shame. I thought like she's a lot by my age. And then here you come. Uh, what, how, how has been this process uh, of seeing this Pat now in its fourth season, and it seems like a rarity nowadays to say things are getting renewed and things are coming back. We're gonna have more seasons, and we got this Pat for a while. It looks like so. Talk about uh, working on it. It's crazy um, because just to think about this journey, um, I wrote the pilot of this show when I slept on a futon, I didn't have a closet, I had five roommates, two rats, and one crud head. <laughs> and to think about where I am now, you know, and the fight that we even had to do for me to do the show, because originally Pat was at Fox, and uh, they wanted to do a show with her, uh, but they didn't know what they wanted to do. And so uh, we gave it to her, no, I saw this play in New York, there's this kid who wrote this play, you gotta go see this play. And she came off the tour, and she went to go see the play, and she came right to me afterwards, and she was like, nigga, you write like a big black woman. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know what that means, but thank you. And she was like, I want you to write my show. And so I came up with this concept of, like, I really wanted to see an R-rated family sitcom with a black family, right? Like, kind of like Bernie Mac and Red Fox, if they were able to just be themselves, you know what I mean? And I wanted her to, I always tell her, I was like, your crown is already bought and paid for, you just gotta put it on, just like James Bowie, you know what I mean? And it was such a fight to get the show. So at first, Fox was like, no, because I was still in college, I was a senior in college. And they were like, no, not, not at all. Pat was like, you know what we're gonna do, Jordan? They got me interviewing these white boys to build this show, but I want you to do the show. And she was like, I, I need you to do me a favor. I'm like, what? She said, I want you to write the pilot and take your name off of it. I was like, what? You turn She's like, write the pilot, take your name off of it. So I did it. And they sent it in the Fox, and Fox was like, who wrote this? And they were like, it's the kids you don't want to hide. Wow. And then, yeah, it's crazy. Okay. Oh, it's crazy. Uh, and then, and then we, went, we ended up at uh, Hulu, and this is why I'm so grateful for BET Plus, and BET, and Joe. Because at Hulu, we were like one of their first, it was still kind of early. We didn't have any black executives working with us. And they didn't understand. I would get notes on the script like, what's a kitchen? Why is the joke about the kitchen? Or why is why, like all these kind of why is she yelling at her kids? And why you know what I mean? And I remember having 
a conversation where, where and I'm a very mild tip of man, but I, I remember having a conversation where I was like, you can't tell me to change the recipe before my people taste the cake. You know? And to God be the glory, you know, they, they were like, this is too black for us. And, uh, <laughs> and BET Plus came in and they said, well, come on home, come on home. Wow. And I can't think of a better home. I can't think of a better home. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Mr. Cole, uh, serious role for you coming today. Average. It's stress me. You can't follow people. <laughs> that was that was good. Uh, Just almost. announced today, uh, second season of Average Joe. <laughs> Thank you, thank you so much. Yeah, you were talking backstage and you said uh, you were 28 and you filmed the first season. Yes, uh, I was. Uh, yes. Too bad it came, yes. came back now. Yes. Uh, how does taking on such a serious role, I mean, listen, we, we know your comics up, we know you're funny, uh, and it's very surprising to work to see from you and you hit it out of the park, man. You were amazing at it. What was your approach? Well, I wanted to outdo Kurt Franklin's less than highly favorite voice. <laughs> Let everybody know the Lord is blessed me as well. <laughs> no, I'm just serious. But check it out, bro. <laughs> I prepared for this role by watching lots of murder. That's all I did. I would leave the stage and make people happy, and then I would leave and I would just watch murder after murder after murder. It was really crazy. Cynthia tell you would show up on set just, just sad. Just, <laughs> just want to just murder. You know? Just lying at the sea floor and killing and hurting people. And every day we was like that. And I think a lot of people don't understand when it comes to a comic, we're always on and we're always looking for the happy medium and things, you know? So to go from that to know you're, you're, you're this miserable dude every day was like hard to do, you know? Like different directors would be like, yeah, can you quit smiling? I'd be like, oh, damn, right. Oh, boy, you know? Got this bloody nice smile in there. So it was really hard to dumb down. Like it's, it really is for any, if you ever see a comedian in a dramatic role, that goes for like Will Smith or Jamie Foxx, anybody. Like it is so hard for us to do that and to be able to, do it with that cast and crew and for them to put up with me and really bring me back down and put me where I need to be at was cool, you know, and to do it with BC Pluses, you know, it was all love, you know, so, yeah. Thank you. Hey, Gary, can I just say, I didn't know till the color purple was over that you were in the yeah. I did not know you were still in the <laughs> Oh, uh, no, thank you. Uh, no, thank you. Look, when they offered me the role, they was like, yeah, uh, we think you'd be good for this. I was like, want to play Harpo? They was like, no. no. <laughs> <laughs> they was like, we think you would kill it. Like, <laughs> <laughs> so I look like a pedophile. <laughs> But everybody was singing in the movie too, you know, except for me, I'm the only person that didn't know a song. I was happy too, you know, I didn't want to be in that singing. Anyway. <laughs> uh, this next question is kind of for everyone, but I want to give a, a real big shout out here to BET because this, this is what supports the second in Hollywood. Um, this year, this is the most any submissions BET has ever put up for a particular range of this, this, looks, this is what support looks like. It's not just making a show and then just like praying to the gods. It's like, all right, let's rent out a space. Let's get the uncle here to make some jokes. Let's get everything going. This, this feels good. And many of you, not you, Jordan, but everyone else has been around here a while. And <laughs> I'm just, you're so young, man. You said you were a senior in college and that really like, 
mess me up just now because I didn't do that in college. But um, you guys have worked so much with different types of executives. I'm sure you try to get things made and people are like, I don't get it. Or this, you know, this isn't universal, we love that word. Uh, how has this differed from any other experience that you had in any other networks, music label, wherever you, you really try to get something going? I, I, I'd like to say, because being the director and looking at a scene and saying, this isn't working, and they're saying, well, the executives said this is what they want. And what I love about what, what's been great here is I came over the whole, I said, I want to do something else. I want to try something else. And they said, well, I, I, we can't, we can't do that. We can't do that. But they made a phone call and I don't, I don't know if they made it to you, Rose Catherine, or to, to, to who, but the word came back, do it, do, do it the way Anj wants it. And it was, it, it, that's, there's a personal, I feel, personal. I feel that you can talk to somebody. And a lot of these places, it's like you've got three, four, five, six layers. I did, I did, I did something, and I felt with, with one company, and I felt every executive had twenty to fifty thousand dollars to cover their mistake. Yeah. Yeah. And it goes yeah. higher and higher and higher and higher. And you said you can spend like two hundred thousand dollars on a stupid question. But what, what, there's something personal. And, and thanks, thank you, Scott. Thank you, Rose Kaplan. Thank you, all of you guys, for for feeling that way. It was that way when I did when I've done a lot of these things. You feel know, per, there's a person. It's a person. You get to talk to a person, and that's important. Very important. Also, women with BET plus. Like, they got good hair departments. <laughs> <laughs> I worked on a lot of white shows. I used to write for Conan O'Brien. I worked on a lot of white shows. And I would be like, I need a haircut. And they'll be like, well, go see, go see uh, 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 Brad. And I'll be like, Brad, I'm going to cut my goddamn hair. And they'll be like, no, he, he will. And he's standing there with some, with some silver. <laughs> So, so that's very important. I don't know if you know how bad that is in Hollywood to fight for the hair department. And for BT, you go to BT, they've got a chart. They'd be like, which one do you want? <laughs> so I want to shout out to all the hair departments and the yeah. hair departments. Yeah. 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 Uh, <laughs> 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 you said it. <laughs> for real though, for real. People be walking around here horrible. Like, like in the mother, like on a lot of white shows. I hate going to a white set. You ever seen them with horrible biopic wigs? Yes. Yeah. <laughs> no, it's really nice. Really nice. But sometimes when you go to a white set, it's all, all white, like makeup and hair team. I'll go in there and they'll be like, oh, they told me to come in here and makeup. They'll be like, you're good. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> Yo, make the, this little, this great woman had me look like I had a autopsy when I walked in. <laughs> Nothing matched my hands on. I'm going to go ahead. I'm going to go ahead. Great. Uh, I kind of want, I don't know, head of programming too. This makes, whatever this is, we need to get a show of this. Uh, Great. Uh, one thing I also appreciate about all of your series, that we're here representing different genres, stories being told. Uh, listen, I'm, I'm a Puerto Rican black guy from the Bronx, and I love, <gasps> thank you, New York. Thank you. <laughs> I miss it so much. Uh, but one thing that I, at Variety, and throughout my whole career, I'm sure you guys have also spoken about this. Black people, people of color, we're not monolithic. We all, black people from New York, are different from black people from Atlanta, we're different from LA, different from Michigan, different from Idaho if you grew up there, right? And we're getting that perspective. Um, what is your proudest moment so far in your career that you feel really contributed to you being on the stage today? Well, <clears throat> I just say that God has blessed Everybody on the stage, you know what I'm saying? Everybody got a different walk of life and different journey. 
I think the, the major key point is everybody just kept their faith. You know what I'm saying? A lot of people give up at times when they're thinking there's no tomorrow, but they didn't understand that the progress that they made yesterday. You know what I'm saying? So everything is not a financial uh, justification and instant gratification, if you want to say. You just got to always know your purpose, know your journey. And every time I go on set, it's like this. God done allowed me to bump shoulders with Dion Cole or Kurt Franklin, you know what I'm saying? And these other brothers that's on stage that, that's doing well in life. And then not only that, while we're working outside work, we can learn from each other. The offset and when the camera says cut is really the most important part is when we're talking to each other and trying to figure out our next move. What you got going on? Who are you? What information do you have to give to me so I can take on my journey? What information I got to give to you to take on your journey? It's like what OG said, he's always teaching. So when he said he's always teaching, I'm a student that's always learning. So when you got something to give, I'm going to listen. 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 You know, specifically been looking at a lot of the shows that are on right now. Is I just love watching the evolution of BT. You know what I mean? It, because I was on Teen Summer. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, Teen Summer with a badass curl. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> and so I just. That's. that's <laughs> <laughs> I was a big fan of the that's girl, and I just see and 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 just watching how they are committed to just great storytelling and 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 great talent, like you know, for them to go get a Dion and for them to get a DC, and to watch um just the just the nuanced programming and how and even how broad the ideas are that, that they're doing. I'm just loving seeing us take. Be, you know, just the, just the, be control of us and tell them the stories that really fit who we are as multiplicity of people, right? And I think it's a beautiful thing to just watch the evolution of this network and 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 to see it from the very beginning, kind of. And so I'm I'm just really proud to look at all this and see it come to pass. And, and I want to I, I want to be real careful about some statements. Because I can go three, four, color girl, busting loose. I can go through all of those. It's not about where I have been. It's about where I'm going. Yeah. It's about the next thing that I do. I did something. I, I love doing King Business. I love working with Kurt Franklin. That inspired me. It's those inspirations that we have day to day that keeps us moving, that keeps me young. So I can't go back. I'm not going back. I walked away from for Color Girls after five years of, of dealing with that, and I didn't want to see it again. I did it. It's been done. And I want you guys to take it and go and do your, your, your thing. But I'm, I'm looking at what's next. Now, BET plus BET is next. Because it's great working with our people. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. I want. I want also add to that that when you say the now, the now is so important because what I love about working at BBC is that they they understand my intentionality. They understand how powerful the tool of television is. I love writing, you know, on this past show because I love hearing things that that normally conversations that can't be had in the everyday black family household all of a sudden they have language for how to deal with shadow work they have language for how to deal with how to how to meet somebody genuinely performing or how to meet somebody gay or how to deal with their own inner trauma that they just bury deep down and don't necessarily know how to talk about right that in itself is the work it's a trojan horse that's why i love comedy that's why I love sitcoms, because you're used to seeing a sitcom, right? It's all bright and it's funny and you hear an audience in the background, but when you punch them in the gut while they're laughing, that's when it pretends itself. All of a sudden you wake up with a new thought and a new feeling, well, I'm going to approach this thing. The comedy show raised me. I learned so much of my life from watching the comedy show in a different world and family matters and good times. And, you know what I mean? And I think that there's a responsibility that a lot of comedy has forgotten. 
There's a responsibility to push us forward. There's a responsibility for the baton to pass on while we follow the laughing. That's the legacy of Dick Gregory. That's the legacy of Fred Fox. That's the legacy of Richard Pryor. You know what I mean? And I think that this is one of the few places where you are never, ever, ever, ever going to see another show like this cash show on any other sitcom. They may try to complicate, copy it, but they cannot duplicate it. Right? They cannot yeah. duplicate it. No, um, I mean, you got black shows and then you got shows, you know? It's true. <laughs> it's just shows, yeah, it's shows. It's just, it's just got black people in it. But it's shows. It's, it's situational stuff. It's, it's a show, you know? And so for BT to, to look at that, and begin doing that and making it real, it's all good, you know? I used to have a problem with BT at one point. I used to be like, why are everybody hairline so crispy? <laughs> <laughs> like, that ain't real life. Like, but the more shows that they do, the more real it became, and more that they start dealing with situational things and not making it black. And it was like, and that's important, you know? Our show is a show about murder. You know, it's, it's just some black people murdering some people, but, <laughs> but it's murder. It's figuring out. Anybody can figure this out. White, Hispanic, black, anybody can figure this out, right? So it's a show about figuring out, and it's not black. And so the more shows that they do like that, the more people will come, the more subscribers, the more money they make, the more money we make, everybody happy, the more barbecues we can have, and Juneteenth, here we come, baby. You know what I'm talking about? So we make good shows and not just black shows. It's gonna stretch out and we're gonna get more people and it's gonna all work out, right? Okay. Come on, Chill. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. One second, one second. Um, I'm gonna end with this. Uh, I'm always a good barrel of kind of useless facts, but I feel like this is gonna be useful right now. Uh, September 2021, 20, that Emmy ceremony had the most people of color ever nominated at the Emmys. Nice. There was a black person in every single acting category, nice. and zero won. Nice. There's no reason why we should have another Emmy so light when there's this kind of content out there. So I hope that the TV guys are considering it, they're talking about it, they're watching, and we get that. And with that, we are going to end, and I'm going to offer you something amazing. Can I say something real no, quick? Yes. Look, man, I want to smoke some weed tonight. Just smoke me a little weed tonight. I got one. That's it. Dion used to date my whole girlfriend. We ain't doing nothing on here. I've never been so scared. All right, um, so my gift to you, my gift to you is a bit too rich for me. There's some pretty food upstairs and pretty drinks. Go mingle, go have a good time. Enjoy it. Thank you very much for today. Thank you.